Well, I missed Halloween by a long shot, but I just couldn't let a year pass without paying respect to the First Lady of Halloween. Elvira was one of those things that, for a kid in the 90s, always just seemed to be there. Like Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny, she and her giant ass were just there to get you in the spirit of Halloween or football or whatever the hell it was, whether you liked it or not. Originally the host of Elvira's movie Macabre, Macabre? Macabre. I don't know how to pronounce that word. On Los Angeles' own KHZ TV, the actress Cassandra Peterson would don her Heaven's Bump? Is that what the hell the hairstyle's called? I mean, I've honestly never seen anyone wear it besides her and the Pride of New Jersey and registered swamp monster, Snooki, who in a weird turn of events actually beat Elvira by being the most popular costume of 2010. You know, because nobody was dressing up like Elvira back then. Anyway, on the show, Elvira would occasionally interrupt whatever B-film they were playing that week with jokes and commentary a la Mystery Science Theater and sometimes even get a call from The Breather. It honestly says that and I have no idea what it means. Of course, all this is completely friggin' news to me because to any kid, eh, more specifically a boy, growing up in the 90s, she was just... I am your hostess, Boo Barella. Honestly, I think that's what I liked about the character, though. She was just this over-the-top, silly embodiment of what Halloween was to me. Just a goofy, fun time to get dressed up and break out of the mundane, everyday, normal kind of life. Halloween purists would probably disagree, and before you ask, yes, there are such people, and if you don't believe me, watch this. Got it. My wife sees Halloween essentially as a mistress that I cheat on her with. But I've always liked the spooky stuff that takes itself less seriously and more just wants to have fun. Things like Are You Afraid of the Dark or Goosebumps were my jams back in the day. Also, did you know Are You Afraid of the Dark was a game? and then it had this in it. Now do you believe me about magic? Seen is believing. And Terry? <laughs> what? Thanks for bringing me back. I guess you really are. This kind of stuff is honestly just great. I mean, obviously now that I'm older, I appreciate it more for nostalgia than anything else, but I like it when something can ride the line between spooky and silly, which kind of stinks because right now everybody seems to just want to crank everything up to scare the shit out of grandma. And I honestly don't think it needs to be that way. Some of my favorite properties walk that particular tightrope between scaring the shit out of you and pissing yourself with laughter. You're gonna need a mop, a bucket, and a change of pants either way, am I right? Don't click off the video, I swear I'll be good. Resident Evil is one that kind of jumps to mind. The most confusing thing to me is when I hear people talk about the series like it was some legit horror property. Uh, were we playing the same game here, y'all? Even that aside, I just still like Elvira's whole aesthetic. It's not trying to hide what it is, it's more playing into it. It reminds me of pop-up October Spirit Halloween stores in the valley, going out trick-or-treating with friends before, you know, the world knew about Bill Cosby, Jeffrey Epstein, and Catholic priests, and sitting at home with all my candy, wondering, is this gonna be the year I get to stay home from the emergency room? So with that said, let's get into this year's drawing. I started out with the basic idea of Elvira uh, turning on Frankenstein. Do you get it? Do you see what I did there? Do you wonder? Do you get what I'm implying? I'm not super sure why I went with this composition other than I wanted to draw it and figured, huh, how long could this take? Spoiler alert, a long time. More and more I've been wanting to work with heavier shadows as my work is typically kind of bright and colorful. I want to be able to do both, so that's what made me pick the darker and more moody color scheme. Everything else fit into place pretty easy. I struggled with the design a little bit, but man, there's something so cool and imposing about Frankenstein to me. Just this big, silent, dead guy. I don't feel like media portrays him that way very much. I'm looking at you, Penny Dreadful. There was a time. Oh, 
boring. But also, I just wanted to draw a big, silent dead guy. I was going to stick to my guns like I had early on and keep it more about the direct shadows, but towards the end, I just couldn't resist throwing in a little bit of color here and there. All in all, I'd say I'm pretty proud of it. I like the bit of storytelling with the power switch and all, and honestly, it's just fun drawing her with monsters. I was going to make it a theme for a month or something, but I don't know, November's almost over, so I guess I'll move on. Unless I don't. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you to Stone McNuckle for making this awesome cover I used on this video. Please check him out. Uh, expect more videos like this out in a more timely manner. If you're new to my art, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram or uh, other places at ChuckArt. If you'd like to help me in the channel, give me a like and subscribe. If you are God's, one of God's chosen ones, head on over to Patreon and unburden yourself your earthly money for me to have. Thank you, seriously. I love you guys. Also, you can buy prints of this piece over at Imprint, and I stream on Twitch. And we, uh, Hold on. Wait a minute. No, no, no. I got more plugs. Listen, I'll, I'll, I'll walk your dog. He might even make it back. Listen, stop.